What to build, what to build. Oh, got an idea. Welcome back to AP Wargaming and Terrain. It is Tuesday, so it's time for some terrain. Now, before we get into this, I know what you're thinking. Everybody does modular ruins. There's a bunch of videos out there on YouTube. And I thought the same thing when I first uh, decided to do this video. But after a little thinking, I, I really started to realize that, you know, that's, it's actually a good thing because we as crafters are building a plethora of knowledge and different ways of doing things and we're sharing it, we're out there on Facebook, we're out there on YouTube and we're giving each other ideas on how to do something in a different way as opposed to the way you do things and I think that is probably the best part of this hobby that we're all in because I'm going to do things a little bit differently than you're going to do things and so on and so forth down the line everybody's going to add just a small little piece of themselves to the crafts that they're doing and the more we put that kind of stuff out there it actually helps with those people that I guess don't get creative ideas so easily it, it helps to push everybody in that uh, direction of being able to think down that road. So anyways, enough talk. Let's uh, let's head to the table and I'll show you what I mean. First thing guys is I started out with a half inch uh, scrap XPS that I had laying around and then I cut them into quarter inch stripping to match the uh, ruined building that we built a couple of weeks ago. I like the way that brick style looks, so that's what I went with, and I stuck with that throughout this uh, entire build. Now, after you got a buttload of these strips all cut out of your XPS, what you're gonna wanna do from there. And this is the funnest part, I think, is just cutting random bricks out of all of these strips. Now there is no particular length that you need. It's all completely random. I did find that I used uh, the longer bricks more often than the shorter bricks. So I would probably go more of a 90% long bricks, 10% short bricks. Uh, the short bricks usually only came in handy every now and then. Now once you got all those bricks made, you want to grab yourself a coffee can, or in my case I have a peanuts can, and fill about half of the, the can full of uh, your bricks. And then you want to put in jagged rocks, or in my case I used a metal dice set that I had. Basically just shook it around for a couple of minutes. Now I did do half at a more uh, aggressive rate compared to the other half and I did that because I wanted some broken bricks and some that had a lot more texture to them. Now for assembling these you're going to want to use a uh, hot glue gun that has a low temp setting to it. Mine didn't. So I had to blow on the, uh, the glue as I was applying it just to try to keep it from melting all the XPS. I still did have issues with it. Um, I've got a low temp gun now, but unfortunately during this video I did not. So one of the things that you're going to want to make sure to do, and we'll throw up uh, a little picture, a couple of pictures here in just a second, is you want to do a half inch extension on both sides of these ruins to where they can connect. A half inch on the bottom for one side and a half inch uh, of overhang on the other side of it. And that will help these to just connect together just like that. 
Now all in all, during this entire process, this was probably this was this was probably the longest process throughout this entire build was building the walls, um, getting all of those uh, half inch overhangs uh, right so we could connect these on the board and actually make them look like uh, one piece instead of multiple pieces just sitting next to each other. And that was the whole entire reason why I didn't put any of these on bases was because I wanted them to be able to slide right up next to each other. Now guys, once you've got all of those put together, you're gonna wanna take your uh, Mod Podge and black paint. And this did take me about two coats. Now after all of that Mod Podge was dry, I took my uh, charcoal gray with a little bit of water and went over all of these runes with that uh, with that gray. It did also take me about two coats just because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. Now in order to add a little bit of variance so it wasn't a just giant blob of a flat gray, I used a rainy day gray. Just picked out a couple of bricks and painted them that. I know it looks a lot or it looks really bright but once you get the wash on there and we uh, dry brush our uh, our charcoal gray back on there it really tones down the color small variant in the in the look it's not as bad as it is here as you're watching me paint these it's definitely not this bright by the end of it Now once that's all done and dry, that's when you want to do your wash and I use just black paint and water. Just smear it all over, get yourself a nice good coverage, um, set them off to the side and let them dry. Now that all the wash is dry and everything looks really dirty, I don't like the way that looks so I wanted to clean it back up. So I took a heavy dry brushing of our charcoal gray and went back over everything. And like I said, this is going to tone down that lighter gray that we picked out a couple of the bricks. It's really going to help pull everything back together. Now once you're done with uh, the dry brushing or the heavy dry brushing of the gray, you want to go over everything with a tan, um, a really light dry brushing, just picking the the top edges of these bricks, uh, making sure to brush downwards only just to pick up the, the high points. And this is also gonna help with the snow effect and everything, making these bricks look uh, really cold. Now we're gonna move on to doing our snow flocking. Uh, here I used uh, Woodland Scenic Snow Flock and PVA glue. You just wanna get yourself a good consistency to where it stands up in whatever container that you're using on its own without uh, flattening back out. I like to put tacky glue on the piece where I'm going to use the snow flocking because that helps it stick. It makes that job just a lot easier. So take yourself a small stick or toothpick or whatever it is that you wanna use and just spread this stuff on. It really does its own texture and that's what I like most about it is it doesn't matter what you do to it, it's not going to completely flatten out. It will stay rough and jagged in uh, certain places and make it look like actual fallen snow. And now that we got our piece covered in our uh, snow flocking, what we're gonna do is before all that PVA dries, we're gonna sprinkle more snow flocking on top of it. And that's gonna help catch those parts of the, uh, the ruin that has the tacky glue on it that we missed. So it looks all cohesive and not uh, patchy snow. Now I had a little bit of time left and I decided that some of these ruins that had the big hangover areas and stuff needed something else, a little bit more detail. And that's when I decided that we were gonna put some icicles on here. Now icicles are really easy. It's just a hot glue gun. Just make strips on some wax paper and then pull them off, 
cut them down with scissors or whatever you've got handy into uh, whatever you think a icicle should look like. Now I was just using the hot tip of the glue gun there to uh, soften the edges where I had cut the glue and everything like that. And then you just keep the glue gun plugged in and melt the ends of your icicles with uh, the glue gun and then stick them to wherever it is that you would like them. All right guys, so there it is. Really simple stuff. They're very modular in a sense. I mean, they they connect to each other, which gives you a lot more options to uh, build larger buildings or build straight walls or whatever you wanna do with them. So after about six, seven hours of work, 10 of these ruined walls done. And they look really good. I'm, I'm quite happy with them. I'm glad I didn't put them on bases because I wanted them to be able to connect to each other so I could use them in many different scenarios as needed. So I did do two different snow types here. I did one with baking soda and then I did one with just flocking. Um, I'll throw up pictures here uh, just to let you see the difference between them. I personally like the flocking a lot better than I do the baking soda. Uh, the baking soda is a little bit harder to work with in my opinion. It dries out really fast, but if you are trying to do a large snow uh, piece for, for your board, the baking soda is going to be the cheaper route. It, it is flexible, it is easy to work with in a sense that as long as you're doing a small area at a time, it won't dry out so fast and it won't be as hard to work with. So anyways guys, super quick video this week. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Share this thing on Facebook and all of those other pages so we can get a little bit more subscribers going on here, guys. Before we end this, I just wanted to say happy 4th of July to everybody. Be safe. Remember, you guys kind of need all your fingers to do all that crafting and stuff. So we'll see you guys this time next week.